Hey, so we released a bunch of cool new things this week. Some are additions to the AI, and some are just quality of life improvements. So, without further ado, let's jump in and go through the key changes. The first new feature we've added is the ability to fork components, which basically means you can create a clone of a component. As an example, imagine you had a data grid with a Boolean column in the form of a checkbox. And instead of a checkbox, you want a toggle. Now a toggle isn't natively available in the data grid, so you could fork the component and ask the AI to add it. Then I can drag the generated component onto my page, bind data to the new data grid, generate the columns, and now in the available types of a column, I have access to toggle. Another example could be if I was using the reorder list component and I wanted to add a border to the dragged item. This isn't possible via the native component, so I could fork it and ask the AI to add this ability. Once generated, I can set up my forked component. So I'll bind my data, transfer over my pre-existing design of the items, change some styling like the padding, background color, and width. And now when I put it into preview mode, we can see I have a border on the dragged item. And if I want to change the styling of this border at all, I've been given properties to do so. Alongside forking components, we've also added the ability to edit the code of a component. Previously from this menu, you could only read the code. Now you can edit it directly. If you aren't familiar with the architecture of components inside of WeWeb and you're curious, then there's three core files you need to concern yourself with. First is the AIMD. This is what's given to the AI as context whenever it tries to use your component. So here contains a description of the component, the different workflows available, and the properties. Next is the config file. Here you define all of the properties available for the component in both the styling panel and the settings panel. And then thirdly, the element file. Here sits the core code of the component that defines how it looks and how the functionality operates. To make a change, it's as simple as editing the code and committing your change. Here, I'll change the opacity of a dragged item to 0.25. And if needed, you can always easily compare versions. Once your component is built, the changes will automatically be applied. As we can see, our manual edit has taken effect and the opacity of a dragged item is now 0.25. Another new addition to the AI is its ability to generate pages. Now, if you prompt the AI with something that is deemed to require multiple pages, the AI will create a task to create each page, which you can then execute from the chat or the task manager. When you execute one of these tasks, you'll be brought to a new blank page with a prompt for the page already pre-filled into the central chat window. If you wish to change the pre-filled prompt at all, you can. If not, you can simply submit it and creating other suggested pages is as simple as running the other page creation tasks. The final big addition this week is our reworking of icons. We've now introduced a new icon management system and a new icon element to go with it. To access the icon management system for your project, you can go into the assets panel in the top bar and then click on icons. Here, you have the ability to add any of our pre-prepared libraries or you can upload your own icons, which is as simple as uploading SVG files. Once added to your project, you can access all of the icons of your project from the selector of the new icon element. Here you can view all of the icons or view them grouped by the origin library. So that's all the key changes of this release. If you're curious to learn about all of the changes of this release, then there'll be a link to the release notes in the description. As always, if you have any feedback on this release, please don't hesitate to share it on any of our socials or the community forum. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.